Hi guys, today we're going to make some queso fresco cheese or borsan cheese. Lots of you like to buy that stuff. It's really expensive. Um, this is a cheap way of having your own, better quality, and it tastes so good. So we're just going to use the Nutribullet, and I got a bundle of green onions and a big bundle of parsley. We're not going to use all that parsley, it might be too much, but I will be using most of the green onions. Don't need to chop them small because I'm going to grind the shit out of them in the Nutribullet. And I'm mostly going to use, well, pretty much all of it, actually. Um, right down to the bulbs. You can leave the bulbs, actually, because you can plant them and grow more green onions in your own garlic, especially if it's summer. So you've got a whole one of these of green onions. We've got our stems we're going to plant. And the majority of the stems of the parsley, I'm going to pick them off and just use the parsley tops. If you leave the stems in, they grind all to hell too. But when you go to spread the borsan-like or the queso fresco cheese that you're making, it'll have little stringers in it. It will almost look like hair <laughs> and it'll turn you off. Um, but it's not, it's just the stems. So I just take a lot of that and just stuff it in here. A bit more here. And I will add a little bit of water just so the Nutribullet grinds it up really good. We want it almost like a paste. And then when it's done grinding, we'll put it through a strainer and press all the liquid out of it. So pardon the noise for a second. small strainer like this in a bowl. We'll just get that through there. And we'll just let that dip. And that liquid, yeah it has flavors in it, but the paste that's left over will still have lots of flavor left in it as well. So you don't have to fret about losing your flavors in the liquids that you'll probably just pour down the drain. This is side here. Now here we've got cheesecloth already on the strainer, hanging over like this, because we're going to be heating up an entire liter of table cream. And you can use milk, whole milk, or whatever kind of dairy. You can use goat's milk, whatever you want. It's all the same. All works out the same. Just I find this easy. It's convenient. Table cream. Now put this on. Now they say you have to bring this up to 180 degrees minimum. Don't scald it. Uh, but you want to stir it constantly. Make sure your pot is stainless steel. Make sure your spoons or anything you're stirring it with is anything basically to do with this cannot be aluminum. As soon as aluminum touches this milk while it's heating up, it will stop it from curdling. And it's a real bitch when you've gone to all this trouble and it doesn't curdle. This one liter, because it's table cream with 18% milk fat, will yield quite a bit of the cheese. You'll actually be able to fill up one of these large tubs of yogurt full. And I mean really full of the cheese that you're making. So you're going to have a good tablespoon, I've used sea salt, coarse sea salt, and a slightly heaping tablespoon of garlic powder. For a liter, I use two-thirds of apple cider vinegar. You can use any clear vinegar. But I also take half a lemon and I squeeze that into it. 
Now you can pick out the seeds. Obviously you don't want the seed, but the pulp is okay. The pulp is good. So we've got our apple cider vinegar and lemon. We've got our salt and our garlic. We've got our herbs here. We got the parsley and we got the green onions. Let's give that a stir. Get that. Ooh, that's already pretty thick. Cool. And we're going to heat this up. And I use my candy thermometer because it's glass and it's totally enclosed. So no aluminum will be touching this. This is a stainless steel pot. I'll just clip it on the end. And I use a plastic stir. Now one time I was not paying attention and I brought this thing to a boil, or almost to a boil, and I whipped it off the stove and I quickly added the vinegar and the lemon and it still worked. So I guess it's just a minimum of 180 degrees, but you still don't want to really scald it. Once it really starts heating up, also, you want to be stirring the milk constantly. So as the milk is heating up, or the table cream actually, it's starting to look really hot. It's not quite, not quite there. Pretty darn close. Stir that. I'm going to poke this, get some more liquid out of here. The more liquid you can get out of your parsley and green onions, the better. You want it as dry as possible. You don't want runny cheese, you want spreadable cheese. Okay, this is off. This is hot. As soon as you take it off the stove, immediately add your apple cider vinegar and lemon juice. And right away, you will see that it will start to curdle. Now the curds are small, not big chunks, like as if you're making cheddar cheese or something. So give that a good stir. Let it sit. And from here, you can let it sit as long as you want. So if you have to, if you have to do some laundry or something like that, or if you want to go watch your TV show, you can. Just put that aside and let it sit and hang out. So we're going to let that sit for a little while. We'll get some more liquid out of here. You see how much more liquid I've gotten out of that? That's excellent. So this is turning just perfect. I'll leave that go. We'll let that sit. And we'll come back in about half an hour. So just leave it sit, hang out for a half an hour and come back. Then you can pour this through your cheesecloth and let it hang and strain. So the curds and the whey, you want to drain the whey out. You don't want to drain the whey out completely because then the cheese you have will be very crumbly. So if you leave some whey in, it will be more spreadable. So we'll be back in about half an hour. So here we've had this sitting for a little while. I've gotten a pot just like this, or a bowl, just dollar store thing, just so I can put this over top. Some people throw the whey down the drain, other people make stuff with it. It's good for like boiling spaghetti noodles, or if you want to add a little bit, if you're making your own sauerkraut or something like that. This is an acidic whey because of the apple cider vinegar and the lemon. If you used animal rennet or something like that, it would be different. With this, just going to pour it in here. See how the curds are small? And you're going to fill this up. So you do want a large strainer and large chunks of cheesecloth. Just get all that out. go. 
know. You can see it's uh, filling up some of the rent, the uh, ways coming in here. It's clear, sort of a yellowy liquid. It's doing perfect. So just let it do that, do its thing. Some people will fold it up like this and tie it onto a coat hanger and hang it and have just a bowl below. Whichever is best for you, however your kitchen is set up. Everybody's kitchens are different. You can see it's already turning out just perfect. See how it can fold away. So you can let that do its business. And then, once this is done, whenever you want, and you can leave this to drip and hang for as long as you want, like till tomorrow if you want. But the more you drain it, the crumblier the cheese will be. So if you want spreadable, you want to leave some of the whey in there. And it's kind of trial and error as to know when. I usually hang mine for about 45 minutes to an hour. See, like this, like a big ball. I'll use a handy dandy, trusty Canada Post blue elastic band. <laughs> Get this all cinched up nice and snug. And I think I will hang it right where I'm at. So I'll just do that. Hang it here. Then I can wash the strainer and just let it do its thing. So, however you go, this is your way in it. Almost feels like a breast implant. <laughs> Not that I would know. We'll come back in about an hour. Okay, the dripping has slowed down quite a bit. So I think what we're going to do is put that back there, take it off its hanger, and check it just to see how far it's drained. Like I said, we don't want to drain it completely. I like I like it crumbly, but I prefer it spreadable. It tastes really good on scrambled eggs or your hamburger or your steak or pretty much anything you want to put it on. This stuff is highly addictive. You can see, oh yeah. See how it's folding away from the cheesecloth? This stuff is ready to mix. So we get our pot back. And we'll just stick it here. There we go. And pull back the cheesecloth. And whoop, plop it back in. It just comes off easy as pie. A couple crumbs off. This is reusable. Just wash it in fresh water. Don't use detergent. Squeeze it out nicely. Let it dry in a clean, dust-free area. And you can reuse it next time. This I'm going to keep because I'm going to attempt to make my own sauerkraut. So here we've got this. Doesn't look like much. That's one liter. And we've gotten lots of liquid out of this, as you can see. It's just like a hard ball. Boop, boop, boop. But what we're going to do is we're going to add the garlic and the coarse sea salt first. I got that mixed up pretty good. And I'll just sprinkle it on there. Won't put all my own. Yeah, what the heck. <laughs> I like garlic. Just give that a good mix so it's nice and thorough. Sometimes I will put sun-dried tomatoes in the blender or my food processor and put sun-dried tomatoes in it. And it just adds that nice little extra bit of flavor. Looks like it's really like too spreadable, but when this cools off in the fridge, it will thicken up and harden up to a certain degree as well.
garlic and the salt in there. You don't have to put too much salt in there. So if on your um, salt reduced diet kind of thing. And then just add this. Screw that in and mix it up. Pretty much done. Easy as pie. Or oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> awesome. Anyhow, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you like, and have a good day.